everyone and welcome back. My name is Leah and in today's video we're going to be making over our 1960s bathroom. So I feel like I need to backtrack a little bit and kind of share where we started with this bathroom and a little bit of its story. Uh, we moved into our farmhouse eight years ago and um, the whole house had not been really touched since the 60s. And so we just kind of had to prioritize certain projects and just start where we could and each year this upstairs bathroom just kept getting pushed to the back burner um, and then we ended up having a major leak in our master bathroom which ended up in a complete um, demo where we had to rip everything down to the studs and then wait another year for a new roof. For the last probably three and a half years, we have been doing some pretty major projects around here. Uh, we did our entire first floor renovation, added new flooring throughout, busted out a wall uh, to create more of an open floor plan. Um, we did a tongue and groove ceiling and then last summer we ended up doing a pretty major exterior renovation so a new roof siding windows we built on a front porch and so all this to say i just this poor bathroom has just been getting kind of shoved again to the back burner and you know, we wanted to make it feel um, more comfortable to be in, even though we knew it would be a while before we could do a big remodel on it. And so eight years ago, I decided to go ahead and just paint everything I could. And then I was really, really into farmhouse style everything. And so I did everything up very much in the um, farmhouse style that you saw then. And um, we loved it. We enjoyed it. I painted cabinets. I painted the countertops. Uh, we we did end up switching out the lights and adding new faucets. I did like a concrete overlay to the sinks to um, get rid of the yellow and uh, painted the cabinets, added new hardware, and then just decorated, you know, and made it feel a lot more like us and like I said, more comfortable to be in. Well, fast forward a few years later, this poor bathroom still awaiting its turn to be remodeled and it just kind of needed a little spruce up. So I decided to kind of change up a little bit um, the look of it, get away from the farmhouse look just a tad. I changed up the countertop paint and made it look more like a faux marble look rather than that sponge painted look that I had first done. I then changed the cabinet color from the deep dark blue to more of a white just to brighten it up a little bit. Painted the walls and this time around I decided to paint the tile floors. So I painted them white, added a little design and we were good to go for another couple of years. That brings us to today. So at this point in time, we are in the midst of a complete master bathroom renovation. And so this bathroom here, our 1960s bathroom that I'm still just kind of slowly sprucing up without doing a full reno, this will become the kids' bathroom. And so a full renovation in here is still probably at least a year or so out. So in the meantime, I wanted to give it a fresh look and feel for them to enjoy until we get around to doing the renovation. So uh, I changed some things up, did some painting, spruced things up a little bit, and that's what I'm gonna share with you all today. So a long story, but I feel like I've got you up to speed now. Now let's check out uh, what we're gonna do to make this bathroom feel new again. The first step was to touch up the tub and tile paint that I applied years ago. Um, I find that I do have to touch this up probably about once a year, but overall it's still a lot better than the yellow tub we had before. 
I was really blessed to have my daughter's help for this project. She was especially excited since this is going to be her bathroom um, to help me fix it up. So we decided we'd replace the mirrors this time around. I never had done that before. You can see on the walls where they were before, but everything needed a really good cleaning once we took the mirrors down. And I also needed to clean the light fixtures really well too. No surprise here, I'm going with Alabaster by Sherwin-Williams for the walls and the ceiling. Just gonna paint everything one cohesive color. I love this color of white. It's the perfect warm neutral white and we have it in probably 95% of our house. So I really like how this bathroom will now flow with the rest of the house. had previously painted the cabinets white but as you can see from the close-up there they definitely needed a good touch-up so since I already had a lot of this alabaster paint I just went with that and gave everything a nice fresh coat since they were already white it only took me one coat of paint to get these cabinets looking fresh and new again And since I wanted to keep this bathroom makeover very budget friendly, I just used the same exact knobs that we had here before because I did buy them new eight years ago when we moved in, but they still tie in nicely with the brushed nickel faucets we have and lighting we have, so I think they'll work fine for now too. Now for the fun part, the floors. I was really excited to do this. As I mentioned before, I had previously painted the floors a couple of years ago, so I wanted to sand away as much of the old paint as possible. So I did a lot of sanding and vacuuming and cleaning before I was ready to start painting again. Um, so I wanted to be sure to prime them really well because the design I did here, it was a really dark color. And so I knew I needed to prime it really well in order to get a nice blank white slate. So I probably ended up using about three coats, I would say. I can't remember of primer um, over the designs here. Then I went back and did a full coat of primer over the entire floor. And then I followed up with a coat of alabaster white to give me that blank surface, blank slate to then add the design. This time around, I wanted our floors to have an authentic vintage farmhouse look. And I did some looking around on Pinterest and online and came up with a design for what I wanted to try. So um, because our tiles are very small and in a lot of places they're really uneven, I wasn't able to go with a stencil. Um, but I found that this actually worked a lot better. I was just able to freehand a border around the perimeter. And then after that, I went back in and freehanded some of the squares um, just to create that vintage look that I was going for so um, at the end I would love to know what you think how it turned out um, but so far we're really loving it After the paint was dry, I did a top coat of polycrylic to seal the floor in and give it a little shine and make it a little bit more durable for everyday use. 
As for decorating, I'm only hanging up a few things just to keep it very simple and neutral and that way my daughter has more of a blank slate so that when this becomes completely her bathroom, she's able to go in and decorate it as she wants to. Um, so for now, just hanging this little floral print that I found at Target recently for $10. They had lots of different colors, but I love the brass detail and I'm learning more about mixing metals, so I feel like it actually goes okay with the brush nickel. I already owned one of the mirrors. I actually had it hanging above our wood stove in our living room and I looked online at Target to see if they still had them and they did. So instead of having to buy two mirrors, we just bought a second mirror to match the one I already had. And these are from the Hearth and Hand line um, at Target. And of course, adding a plant because every room needs a plant, I think. Um, and I added it to the top of this little riser that I found a while back at the Target Dollar Spot. And I feel like the wood kind of balances out the wood framed mirrors. Since we don't really have a lot of storage space in this bathroom for towels, I've always just kept this basket here with towels rolled up in it. And it's really convenient to be able to just grab a towel when you get out of the shower. It also offers some texture to the room. I really like how the color in this basket uh, really ties along nicely with the shade of wood and the mirrors and also the little riser. And it also adds a little bit of contrast against the white floors, white walls, and white cabinets. To finish off the decor for the space, I just added this dried floral wreath that I already had. I got this a couple years ago from Wayfair. And then I also switched out the basket that the toilet paper is in just for something different and it kind of fills up the space a little bit better than what we had there before. A quick reminder of what this space looked like when we first bought our home eight years ago and what it looks like today after a few DIY projects and a lot of paint. Even though this bathroom is still a 1960s bathroom in need of a major renovation, I feel like now it's a lot more comfortable to be in. It feels fresh and clean and updated, and I think this will definitely hold us over for the next year or so until we can finally get around to doing that renovation. I hope this video was an encouragement for us to all create beautiful spaces, even in the waiting. You don't have to wait until you can do those really big renovations to create a space that you truly love. It's really amazing what all you can accomplish with just some paint and some elbow grease and just a vision for making your space what you truly want it to be. So I hope you enjoyed it and I definitely look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.